Now let's solve some problems by using the Fourier transform. The very first problem is problem number one. Find the Fourier transform of the following piecewise function, which is f of x equals to x when x is greater than negative one and less than positive one. f of x will be zero if x is less than negative one and greater than positive one. This is a piecewise function. My f of x will be x if x is greater than negative 1 and less than positive 1. My f of x will be 0 if x is less than negative 1 and greater than positive 1. How are we going to find the Fourier transform of this function? I'm going to show the limit by using the number line here. This side is negative infinity. The right side is the positive infinity. My limit stays here from negative 1 to positive 1. Well, this is going to be the domain. Look, the range is from negative 1 up to positive 1. And the right side of the 0 is positive. Positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, up to positive infinity. On the left side of the 0, I have negative values. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, up to negative infinity. Now, what is my domain? My domain is from negative 1 up to positive 1. From negative 1 up to positive 1. This is going to be the domain of this function, f of x. So on the number line, I'm going to play between negative 1 and positive 1. From negative 1 up to positive 1. Remember, negative 1 and positive 1 are not included because there is no equality bar. x must be greater than negative 1 and must be less than 1. Since there is no equality bar, it is just the inequality bar. Therefore, negative 1 and positive 1 are not included. This is my domain. If you don't remember what is domain and range of the function, you can check my calculus one. There is a complete section regarding domain and range of the function. If you want to go in depth and understand it in a better way, you can check it out there. So let me apply the Fourier transform. The formula of the Fourier transform is f of s equals to integral of f of x times e to the iota sx dx, where the limit ranges from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Since the given function has two pieces, it is a piecewise function. Therefore, I'm going to make two pieces of the formula. It equals to integral of f of x times e to the iota sx dx, where the limit ranges from negative infinity up to negative 1, plus integral of f of x times e to the iota sx dx, where the limit ranges from negative 1 up to positive 1. As I said, the given function f of x is a piecewise function, which has two pieces, x and 0. But what is the domain? The domain is from negative 1 up to positive 1. According to the Fourier transform formula, the limit ranges from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Look, I don't need negative infinity up to positive infinity. I need negative 1 up to positive 1. Can I write negative infinity up to positive infinity in two pieces? Yes. Look, the main equation starts from negative infinity. From negative infinity up to negative 1. This is going to be my first part. And then, plus from negative 1 up to positive 1, this is going to be my second part. Plus, from positive 1 up to positive infinity is my third part. As I said, my limit is from negative 1 up to positive 1. I don't need negative infinity up to positive infinity. Uh, by using the Fourier transform, I can break this equation in three pieces. The limit of the integration starts from negative infinity, from negative infinity up to negative 1. This is going to be my first piece, plus, and then from negative 1, from negative 1 up to positive 1 is my second piece, and then plus, from positive 1, from positive 1 up to positive infinity is my third part. So it is absolutely one thing. Whether you write the equation in this form, just directly put negative infinity up to positive infinity, or in three pieces, Ultimately, it is absolutely the same thing because look, because look, it starts from negative infinity and ended up with the positive infinity. Negative infinity up to positive infinity. The same thing happens here from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Why we do this? We do this because my limit is from negative 1 up to positive 1. Look to the function f of x. The function says that f of x is 0 f of x will be 0 here, it equals to 0 here, if x is less than negative 1 and greater than positive 1. Less than negative 1. Less than negative 1. 
When you look to this term, it is less than negative 1. It starts from negative infinity up to negative 1. So it is less than negative 1. If x is less than negative 1, then the function will be 0. Similarly here, if x is greater than 1, if x is greater than 1 here, then again the function will be 0. When you look to the third term, x is greater than 1 because it starts from 1 up to positive infinity, so it, so it is greater than 1. The limit of the third term is greater than 1. Now, if x is greater than 1, then the function will be 0. For this term, my f of x will be 0 here. I'm going to put 0 here. So 0 times anything will be 0. This whole term will be 0. Similarly, for the third term, I'm going to put f of x equals to 0. So 0 times anything will be 0. The only part that I left is the middle part. It ranges from negative 1 up to positive 1. f of x will be x if x is greater than negative 1 and less than positive 1. When you look to the limit of this integration, it is greater than negative 1. It starts from negative 1 up to positive 1 greater than negative 1 and less than positive 1, which means that it is between negative 1 up to positive 1. So I left only with this term, f of x. Just plug in f of x equals to x, because my f of x will be x, if such is the case. The rest of the two terms will be 0. I only left with the middle term, which is integral of f of x times e to the iota sx dx, where the limit starts from negative 1 up to positive 1. Just plug in f of x equals to x, because remember, my f of x will be x if the range is from negative 1 up to positive 1. Just plug in f of x equals to x here. f of x equals to x times e to the iota sx dx. I have the product of x and e to the iota sx. Let me find the integration. To find the integration, I'm going to use the product rule because it is the product of two functions x is one function, e to the iota sx is another function, so it is the product of two functions. Therefore, I'm going to use the product rule. So, according to the product rule, I will have x times e to the iota sx or iota s minus e to the iota sx or iota squared times s squared. According to the product rule, I will leave the first function as it is and will take the integration of the second function, which is e to the iota sx. So integration of e to the iota sx is e to the iota sx or iota s. It is exactly like e to the 2x. So integration of e to the 2x is e to the 2x or 2. iota s, this part behaves as a constant. So integration of e to the iota sx will be e to the iota sx or iota s. There are two ways to find the integration of x times e to the iota sx. One is to apply the product formula. The second method is a bit different. It is pretty easy if you have a pure algebraic term. If your one term is a pure algebraic term, then it is pretty easy for you to use that technique. The technique is that you have to put differentiation on one side and integration on another side. Take the derivative of the algebraic term and integration of the second term. I have done it in calculus 2 and calculus 3. You can check it out there. So the integration of x times e to the iota sx ds equals to x times e to the iota sx or iota s minus e to the iota sx or iota squared times a squared. Plug in the values of the limit here. Just plug in x equals to 1. First put the limit 1. Plug in x equals to 1 here x equals to 1 and x equals to 1 and then minus put the lower limit which is negative 1 plug in x equals to negative 1 x equals to negative 1 x equals to negative 1 do simplification to have e to the iota s or iota s minus e to the iota s or iota squared times a squared minus into negative e to the negative iota s or iota s minus e to the negative iota s or iota squared times s squared. Do further simplification to have this expression. Negative times negative will be positive. Negative times negative will be positive. Now separate the terms. Bring this e to the iota s x, i s and e to the iota s or i s together and bring this negative e to the iota s or iota squared times 
a squared with this term. Just separate the terms here. These two terms go together and these two terms go together. Now, do you know that iota squared equals to negative 1? So the value of the iota squared is negative 1. Can I write iota squared equals to negative 1 here? So negative 1 times a squared will be negative a squared. That's why I have negative a squared because iota squared equals to negative 1. So negative 1 times a squared is negative a squared. Look, I need e to the iota s minus e to the negative iota s instead of e to the iota s minus e to the iota s. I need this term positive and this term negative. Similarly here, I need this term in negative form and this term in positive form. Later I will show you the formula that why I do this. So can I take negative 1 common? Just take negative 1 common from the numerator here and negative 1 from the numerator here. Just take out negative 1 here and negative 1 here. To have negative into e to the iota s minus e to the negative iota s all over iota s minus e to the iota s plus e to the negative iota s all over a squared. Because when you open the parenthesis, you're going to get the same thing. So the left side expression will be 2 sin s or s and the right side expression will be 2 cos s or a squared. According to the formula, e to the iota s minus e to the negative iota s or iota equals to 2 sin s. If you remember, there was a formula. Don't forget s in the denominator. Put s in denominator from here up to here. Look, e to the iota s minus e to the negative iota s all over iota, not s. Don't include s. All over iota. It equals to 2 sin s. As I said, there is a product of s in the denominator. So don't forget to put s in the denominator here. If you are confused, just go back and check the formula. This formula sin x equals to e to the iota x minus e to the iota x or 2i. Remember, we have i and in the denominator. So these two will have the product with the sin x. Can I write this formula in the form of 2 sin x? If I bring these two from the denominator and take the product with the sin x, I can write 2 sin x equals to e to the iota x minus e to the negative iota x or iota. That's what I did here. Here, e to the iota s minus e to the iota s or iota equals to 2 sin s. If you take out 1 hour s here, 1 hour s into, then you will have only iota. So you're going to have 2 sin s times 1 hour s which equals to 2 sin s or s. Similarly here, when you come to the right expression, e to the iota s plus e to the negative iota s all or s squared equals to 2 cos s. But then don't forget s squared. Let me check the formula. This formula, e to the iota x minus e to the iota x equals to 2 cos x. You're going to put 2 cos x for e to the iota x plus e to the negative iota x. That's what I did here. e to the iota s plus e to the negative iota x equals to 2 cos x. But then don't forget the s squared in the denominator, so you have to put s squared in the denominator. Now to further simplification to have f of x equals to negative 2 our s squared into s times sin s minus cos s. Just take negative 2 or s squared common. If you take negative 2 our s squared common, you're going to have s times sin x because look, the power of s is 1 here. If you cancel this s with the 2, you left s in the denominator here. Just take negative 2 our s squared common. This is going to be the final expression. This is the Fourier transform of the given function.